Well, good morning, folks. Sunday morning painting. Here we are. Okay. So, yesterday we saw the... Let's get rid of this. Oof. That just really changes the color on stuff. You put this here and it really just kind of drowns that. Maybe that's why you're seeing all kinds of weird colors affected by it. And if you look at the color here, that's... Um, down here on the, uh, oh, let's do our check before we get any further. Although I already checked for it, but let me do it again. I don't want to get an hour in and find out it's all backwards. This should be correct on your screen. Man, there's actually quite a bit of a delay. There you go. Okay, perfect. Do the Jack Daniels check. <laughs> Not that we're drinking any of that this morning. That's a good way to not get things done. But this blue color you see over here, that's kind of its natural. It, it looks the same to me as it does on your screen. And you put this here where it's grabbing some of that color and it, cha it changes it on the screen. So it's definitely uh, affected by that kind of stuff. But anyways, I digress. We did paint one Amorite yesterday waiting for the crossbowmen to get their act together. I think he turned out pretty well. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to set him to the side. Uh, I'd love to just continue going on with the Amorites, but uh, now I can say that I've actually painted a book one figure. <laughs> so, um, we need to go back and finish on these crossbowmen, okay? So we can finish these eight crossbowmen, and then when we're done with this papal army for, for the time being, so we can we can play them, so they can get their butts kicked. It's probably what's going to happen. Anywho, um, let's go back to where we were here. Hopefully, we don't have to do two sessions today. It doesn't get messed up like it did yesterday. I did check for the power. It's drawing power from everywhere. Oh, we don't need to do that. Yep. Yeah, that was just a fluke. I don't know if my, my power thing went dry or something like that. But I got disconnected yesterday because the outlet stopped drawing power and my computer died. Which means my phone died. Everything died. All right. Let's see if we can get some headway. I want this. I woke up like at 1:52 a.m. and went back to sleep. And the next thing you know, I overslept my alarm by 40 minutes. So I'm 40 minutes late, unfortunately. So. I did the only reasonable thing I could do. I didn't do my um, I didn't do my online game turns like I do first thing in the morning. That'll just have to wait. I don't want to start this any later than I already am. So, okay. So it looks like this guy's tunic is done. All right. Now the red that we used, of course, is this one. It's for some reason it separates when overnight. You can see here the the white and the acrylic comes to the surface. So let's remix this up a little bit. And let's go ahead and put the base color. We're gonna do these other three guys. We're gonna do these three figures at once. So let's put some more magic juices in here.
darker than that. Just notice that this figure has some flash. It looks like I missed. Not only did these figures have flash, they had flash in unusual places because of how the crossbow was attached. So let's see if we can eliminate this flash without damaging the crossbow. Because honestly, they were a pain in the butt to put on. So, nope. It's in a place that's very noticeable. I think we got it. There we go. All right, now what we'll do is See, this is all the kind of stuff that you guys don't see everybody else has to deal with. I think everything just happens all hunky-dory. It doesn't. It's a, all these kind of small adversities happen all the time. Let's go ahead and glue him back on. And we're going to set him off to the side. Wait for that to dry. Yeah, little things like that happen all the time. Yeah. Not a big deal. I'm not dead set in my ways and how this has to happen that I have to paint all of them at once or 
what have you. Let's go ahead and clean. Make sure we didn't miss a, any spots on this and we'll just go to the next color up. Yeah, I didn't want to get too far ahead and then have that flash to deal with. Here you are, my favorite Martian. Good morning, good afternoon to you, sir. <laughs> you should do videos on what you're doing. Nah, you probably don't want to. I've actually had some people that, um, I know lots of, no lots of painters no i know several painters that would never do what i'm doing because they do this for a living and um you know i don't know i have too much overhead to do this for a living not that i have that much overhead but you know mr shevlin welcome ah the uk wakes up they've been awake I'm the one that woke up 40 minutes late. Well, it's not coming out of my painting time. That's all I'm saying. There's nothing worse than waking up earlier than anybody else in this city. And then having to do something I don't want to do. You know, I wake up this early. Well, I mean, it's not that early, but, you know, it's on a Sunday. People just, I don't know, it was many years ago. I just realized that if I wanted to get some me time, I needed to do it first. And there's nothing worse than getting up in the morning and going straight to work. I want to do what I want to do first, and then the rest of the world can wait on me. And I've already done what I've wanted to do. So, in order to have about an hour to myself before I have to start getting ready for work on a Monday through Friday, because it seems like I'm the only person I know that works a normal schedule. Everybody else is like working weekends, but then they're sitting around doing nothing on a Tuesday or stuff like that. But for those of us that have normal schedules, um, I got to get up at five in the morning to have an hour to myself, check emails and stuff like that. So I just realized many years ago, I'm just, I'm going to wake up at that time every morning and that way, you know, you don't dread, oh, this is the morning I got to wake up at 5 a.m. instead of 7. I'm like, nope, I wake up at the same time every morning. And I dialed it back because at one point it was waking up at 4. But yeah, it works for me. But I was 40 minutes late today. Damn it. <sighs> Lack of personal charisma would be an issue for my videos. Oh, come on. There is some people. Okay, so there's a guy I watch. 
I don't watch them very often because I don't watch videos much anymore. Um, I perform in them. Um, <laughs> and he's actually, I'm not going to say he's, he's who got me into doing this. But I just realized if this guy can do videos, I can do videos. He's a guy from the UK. He is extremely relaxing to listen to. And I don't mean that in an ugly way. He is. He has a nice meter with his voice. He speaks the... He speaks with a very easy to understand English accent. Um... What do you guys call that? Received pronunciation? I don't know. He's very easy to understand. He has a nice meter. He may not be fun to game with. He may not. He's probably not fun at parties. But I like his content. It's very calming. And um, and I wouldn't say he has a lot of charisma. So. Um, now, there are a couple of videos that I've seen by different people that I'm like, you do not need to make any more videos because they were just extremely, extremely monotone. Um, but, you know, I'm sure people look at my stuff and go, Man, I don't like that stupid fellow from the Americas. I don't like him. That's fine. Um, speaking of I don't like him, I've... I've been, I read audio books or, you know, I had to do yard work yesterday. It almost, it almost kicked my ass. It was, it was bad. It was so freaking hot. Um, it, it didn't kick my ass. I just had to take many, many breaks. Um, cause it was in 90 degrees and high humidity and anyhow. So I'm I'm reading, I'm, I'm listening to a book called Killing Patton by Bill O'Reilly and I don't know if I can continue reading to it. His the meter on his on his book thing. He's like he's doing his damn TV show, and it's just all broken, and he mispronounces stuff. Um, so um, right now he's in a part of the book that he's talking about the Battle of the Bulge, and he's talking about different antagonists or whatever and he brings up one of the commanders of the first SS division all you guys are war gamers know who this Nazi bastard is and he calls him Joaquin Pieper and he mentions him over and over again and I'm like I wanted to pull my hair out just with something just fingernails on a on a dartboard so he mispronounces things all the time I thought that somebody who would be a professional entertainer and journalist would do a better job at it but um, his other book that I read called Killy Reagan isn't narrated by him um, so it was fine you know the narrator did a good job but I'm never going to I'm never going to recommend a book that has tons of mispronunciations in it that are you know obvious now I'll be honest with you the other day where I was doing the Amrites thing I was reading from uh, armies and what exactly is it called? Armies and Enemies of the Near East or whatever. The the, two, the book by the two Nigels. And I'm reading stuff from... Uh, from Akkad and Sumer and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the hell out of that stuff. But there aren't people walking around knowing how th those languages are pronounced correctly. You know, If you wanted people to understand your freaking language, you shouldn't have your civilization fall. Okay? Do your part. But yeah, Bill O'Reilly was driving me bananas. So I don't know if I'm going to continue that book or not. You've been working since 6 a.m. UK. Excellent. Working should be a day off. Are you going to be like a Mitch and be off tomorrow? Joaquin Peeper. What a nut what a nutcase. <laughs> and not that it's you know disrespectful to the guy. I mean he's a Nazi bastard, so screw him. But you know, at least say his name right. You know.
there's that one skit. Speaking of Nazi bastard, uh, there's that one skit that I came across several years ago that just had me in stitches. And you guys in the UK will know what it is because it's a UK routine. And um, I'd never heard of these guys before, but I guess it's a couple of guys. And one guy's um, one guy sounds normal. One guy, I guess, is effeminate all the time. But it's it's hilarious. And it's and the name of their skit is called "Are We the Baddies?" And it's, both of them are dressed up in uh, SS get up, and they're supposedly soldiers on the Eastern Front, and they start to question whether or not you know why they have skulls on their uniforms. And it just it was hilarious. It, you know. Humor is funny when it makes sense um, what they're talking about. You know, it's like, you know, why didn't people put two and two together? That's a, that's a really funny thing. Look up Are We the Baddies on YouTube. Most of you guys have probably seen it already, I would imagine. <laughs> Full day tomorrow. Uh-oh. Well, hopefully you have two days off a week, man. Hopefully everybody needs that. I need about five, but, you know, I am a big fan of routine. So, whatever the routine is, stick with it. There's several other things he mispronounces in the book. I, I should have written them down. One of the best narr narrators um, recently that I've listened to in a book is Dan Jones narrating his own stuff. It, to, to the untrained ear, it seems like he gets everything in every language pronounced correctly, which is what you should do. Um, but he's actually a really good narrator. And he's a young guy, too. Mitchell and Webb. Okay, that, that sketch is hilarious. And it makes total sense. Mitchell and Webb. Yeah. Are we the baddies? <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Why do you have fucking skulls on your on your caps? <laughs> that one part that he says, well, they don't design our own uniforms. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's true. It's true. <laughs> oh, man. Welcome, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Scotland's alive. Scotland. I'm going to get around to doing that. I know I keep saying it, the pre-feudal Scots. I think I would have so much fun doing that. You guys would get annoyed. I'd do these fake-ass Scots accent. Hey, I'm doing the best I can. I am from the United States. As bad an accent as I do, I'm st I am still do one of the best accents of people from this continent. And you guys know it. Because all, all the time there'll be... You know, you'll watch some show. And it'll be some American show. And it'll be English actors or Australian actors. Commonwealth actors. Not Canadians. They get a pass because it's easy for them. But people from Australia or the UK, and they're playing some role where they have to play an American. And they drop the accent completely. Like, you couldn't even tell they were from another country. And you get ingrates from this continent. They can't do the same, you know? I don't know. You guys are upset with them. I don't blame you. I'm on your side. <laughs> All right, is it time for the keys? Yeah. This guy get glued up. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Let's bring this guy up equivalently. Now that we can get there. Oh, we need to finish that first shade. Got distracted by that flash of unusual size. 
more of the stuff here. Yeah, pre feudal Scots, all I have to do is fire up. Um, what's that kid's movie? Brave, and just paint all the figures like that, right? That's accurate. So I didn't know there was an actual registry for um, tartan patterns. And uh, apparently, Disney registered the tartan pattern of some of their characters because it has purple in it. I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah, there'd be some of that in there, even though they say that, you know, that stuff really didn't start getting into use until the 1600s. The problem is, is that's, that's true and that's not true. Uh, I think what they mean is certain clans didn't have registered tartan patterns until that time, but the tartan stuff had been used since the ancient British times it just may not be specifically for anybody in particular because if you look at stuff like the Picts um, and the ancient Brits and all, all during that you know really ancient time period they had tartan like patterns it just might not have been oh this is the tartan panel of McDougal's or the Douglas's or you know whoever it was you know but uh, anyhow Mr. Cog welcome Welcome, welcome. So, I am looking to try my hand at doing some, some cross-hatch type patterns on capes and things like that. Let's put it that way. And I like Fast Pike. Fast Pike is exciting. Exciting things happen with Fast Pike. They can get themselves... They have to get themselves into trouble sometimes. So... In Sweden, you can register your own coat of arms. Yes, I've been thinking about it. You mean yours isn't already registered? I don't know. I've got mine. Mine's up there in the left-hand corner. At least one version of it. They had lots of that one. My dad's had that at least. At least from the 1960s. He got it one time and, you know. Or are you talking about register like, I have a last name and I can't find the coat of arms, so I'll create one. I don't know. Need to find out because Mitch needs a new one because his sucks. He's got that potted plant. Yeah, Sweden has heraldry. Maybe not everybody, I don't know. I keep saying I gotta build one of these armies, I gotta build another one. Man, I gotta build them all. You know, it, it's, there's only a handful of armies, and I mean maybe 
I'm gonna go out on a limb and say 12. I'm, I have no interest in building. That's 12 out of 530 of them, so pretty much all of them. Yes, create your own. Oh, we'll already have a good one. You don't have one? I don't know. I lucked out. I got a, I got one I like. I lucked out. Yeah, I got I got so many so many armies to do. I got so many arms to do, I don't have to buy any lead for. I think I'll always call it lead, no matter what it's made out of. Oh, well, except the plastic. Of course, I'm not painting any plastic anytime soon, but, you know, whatever this pewter-ish alloy is, you know, it's always going to be called lead by some of us. You know, say, oh, let me go get my, my mountain of pewter-ish alloy. No, it's lead mountain. Uh, and get it in the coat of arms registry so no one can steal the design. Oh, okay. You need to register your little cog thing there. That'd be a good one. I like that. No one can steal the design. You mean nobody can steal the design legally. But then wouldn't be stealing, would it? Good morning, Dirk. could steal it legally. sure we got black on all these spots here underneath okay we guys bring both of these guys up to the point where they need to get the key i think so okay i'm sure we're gonna need other white i'm going through white faster than anything else yeah i got really psyched finish that one amorite guy but if, I'm, if I, there's any hope of finishing these crossbowmen, i got to do it now. Because the next thing you know, I'm going to be on this Amorite train of working on the chariots and the blade guys and all that kind of stuff. Alright, let's see if we can do it the right way this way, which is doing little circles first. I gotta make them really, really small though.
Geil. I may end up not liking this on the front and just getting rid of this, this, this little motif, but I figured it was an opportunity to do that. Yes. This brush is looking massive and it's like the smallest one I have. All right, this isn't working. Where is the surgical one? I haven't used it in so long. It may not even be here, maybe in the other one. Yeah, I'm actually not sure where this brush came from. But it is one that's totally different. Here it is. See, it doesn't look like any of the other ones. This used to be my thinnest brush. And it's an 18 aught. That doesn't mean anything because ultimately it's the tip and control that matter. Let's see if we can perform some miracles with this thing. I hadn't used this thing in a long time. It may not be worth a damn anymore. I might have remembered it more fondly than it deserves to be remembered for. It's doing better than the other ones. Okay, that's not bad. We'll have to clean that up a little bit like we had to do the center. You're gonna have to clean up the little the little holes. That's just it's just too small to get right. Let's do the same thing with the other one. Get a little bit more paint on there to get some decent flow. Okay, that's not bad. All right, let's just roll right into cleaning that up. We're gonna use the same brush. Obviously this one has the amount of flow that the other ones don't have. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little clean after I'm done with it. So obviously I'm in need of its services in the future. Now we want to, let's get a little of that. little bit more of this Okay, so that will work. Okay, that will work. Let's rinse this thing out. Give it a little clean here with this brush cleaner. See if it makes a difference. I don't think I've ever cleaned this brush with a I haven't, I didn't get this stuff until recently. 
I say three years ago. I don't know that it's it's good at taking paint off as far as reshaping it. I've tried leaving the stuff overnight. Once you get a brush that's, that's just going sideways, there's just no way to recover it in my opinion. Maybe better brushes, but these cheapo things that I have access to. Um, oh, this one comes from Japan. Halla freaking Luya. Wow, it's the only brush that I have that's probably not made in red freaking China, unfortunately. Japanese brush. Yoto. What do we got here? In Scotland, you have to have your coat of arms approved by a Lord Lion King of Arms. Huh. Well, I didn't vote for that guy. <laughs> yeah, this has dried paint on it from who knows when back when. We're going to leave this as is. Figure it's probably in a better shape than I found it. Okay, happy brush. Excellent. All right, let's bring these guys up to the final, final layer here, which is adding the core color and a tiny little bit of white. I said tiny, geez. That too much? Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's, uh, Let's back this up a little bit. Yeah, let's add this one before we lighten it up even more. Japanese brush. Wow. I'm floored. It's hard to find things made in Japan. You know, that aren't like vehicles. Everybody who did can speak <laughs> a little Japanese. Hi, Wakari Masen. Did I read Clavel Shogun? Nope. No. Japanese just don't do the right movies. I mean, I mean the rich history that the Japanese have, there should be all kinds of samurai movies out there. And they're just not there. You know? Now you go on some streaming service or something like that and the Koreans have tons of historical movies. Whether or not they're historic, whether or not they're realistic, is irrelevant. Okay, but at least the you know something you can watch that could excite you to read more about their history. The Koreans have tons. The Chinese have some, and the Japanese have like none. And it's just like what? I mean, it's all there, you know. Oh, well. Need to do my refurb for 3.0 for my samurai army. That's all on my list, but so is everything else. 
Now, that's probably the only army that a refurb would involve not changing my basing technique. Because if I remember correctly, the first army that I built with the new Goop system was my Samurai in 2009. So since 2009, my basing technique has been consistent. Before that, I used a white glue sand mixture, which was um, not as good. Um, it's still okay, but it's just, it's not as good. So I would have to completely rebase them um, to the new method. I can't do the old one anymore. I don't, I don't honestly don't remember how to do it. And I, I, it'd be like backdating something like why bother? Um, but my samurai, I think I need to build a couple more units and then it'd be okay to go. But they the samurai sound like they're a lot more fun to play than in real life. And in real life, they're very monochromatic. They're, they don't have a lot of different varieties. So that doesn't make them very exciting to play. And their enemies list is just lacking. But. You get around to them at some point. They're just not a priority. Okay, now they should all be the same. So let's go ahead and take all of them and bring them up. Could be a little pinkish, I don't mind. It's not like this stuff's gonna be everywhere. Let's keep it away from the design on his chest to make it pop a little bit more. Yeah, it's hard to find things made in Japan. It used to be easier. Our cars are made in Japan. Literally. They're actually, the first cars I've ever had, I've always had Japanese vehicles, but they're usually made in the United States. But these, our two Subarus come from Japan. So there's some serious samurai, uh, uh, what do you call it, quality control on them. What else? Yeah. And a paintbrush. Who is, who is it who does some nice 15 millimeter samurai? Um, the Peter Pig ones. When the Peter Pig ones, they came out, they're absolutely gorgeous figures. Absolutely gorgeous figures. Um, it's the only army I bought. I saw them at Historicon 2009 and turned around and, and stopped what I was doing and built that army next. And I absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. And Peter Pig does a really good job of showing what all their figures look like. Let me uh, let me put up a link here, since I'm at a stopping point. Uh, and I have a bunch of two dragons as well. Unfortunately, they're not very compatible. I I bought a bunch of two dragons from somebody. Let's open up another window. Let's go to, uh, oh, next base. Let's go there. Let's go here. Let's go. I haven't put stuff on here in five years. It's a pain in the ass. Honestly, I don't get very many views for all the effort that it takes to put things on here. So 
I don't put things in um, on my WordPress site anymore. Oh yeah, primitive background here with uh, with a bu this is my old painting room that had the brown walls. Let's see. Try this. That's the pictures of of my samurai army there. And um, that's all with Peter Pig figures. And I absolutely love them. And I especially like the cavalry units that have the turnip on them. Radish, sorry. Yeah. I don't really use WordPress anymore. It's just a pain in the butt. You know, some people like to type. Whatever happened to two dragons? So I think they're carried by minifigs. Minifigs has them in their listings. If you go to Minifig Co. UK, they're there in their listings. I have a bunch. I mean, I have a lot of them. Um, this one guy I know was getting rid of them, and for 50 bucks he gave them to me. And I, you know, I watered them slash felt bad for them, so... I have a bunch, but they're very, they're chunky. I don't dislike how they look. They're just not going to mix well with the other guys on the same stand. So, um, yeah, I love my, I love my samurai and they're fun to play. Cause you get to do sounds like, you know, and things like that, you know, guttural crap, you know, when you're playing them. All right, we're gonna put, um, we're gonna give the the tights or the hose on these guys underneath. We're gonna do it in uh, a light gray. We're gonna do that, and um, maybe not one that's a blue based one. Maybe do something like this. What's this? What color is that? Stone gray. Yeah, I used it so much that the rutabagas. On the backs of the cavalry. Yeah, they're um, turnips. They're whatever. Not turnips, radishes. It's based on... Um, it's based on this. Which is actually a little later period than, than the samurai list lets you do. Let's see. It's in the Kawanakajima book. And this is, um, I built this army based on, you can see I'm here in the distance. The radish is out in the distance, spicy radish. Um, I based mine on um, Wesugi's Kenshin's army. What is that? There's a particular... Here we go. And one of the leaders actually had a, one of the sub leaders actually had a um, grasshopper. Yeah, the battle radishes. What's the name of this guy's unit? Three. The first wave was commanded by Kakizaki Kageye, probably said Kageye wrong, whose banner bears the device of a grasshopper. His troops are identified by the badge of a giant radish on their Shashimono flags. Yeah. Cool. Battle radish. I saw that and I'm like, that's cool. I'm a big fan of wasabi, so, you know, love wasabi stuff. I like spicy things anyway, so. Yeah. It's funny, I like a lot of things Japanese, 
Never been a fan of them in World War II. Well, you know, obviously we didn't want them to win. Duh. I'm just saying that, you know, if I was going to paint World War II stuff, I don't rush out and, and do... I don't like the Pacific Theater. Um, I think it's kind of lame. Doesn't do it for me. Japanese don't make as good an adversary as those uh, Nazi bastards. I think the Nazi bastards are a better adversary. I gotta be careful. I get those Nazis get all upset with me. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> I always, this is a very anti-communist place, but I don't like the I don't like those Nazi bastards either. So you know, they were just better dressers. <laughs> All right, I think we can start with this. We don't want it to be super super dark. Let's see. We need to scoot this back. Let's take this up to there. Okay. I did have some Japanese ships in 2400 scale. I don't think I have, I do have some Japanese stuff in 172nd, but I've never gotten around to painting it. Never painted a model of a zero or anything like that. For me, it was what I have, Messerschmitts and Stukas and Spitfires and Hurricanes. I remember as a kid, st stick him to the roof of the thumbtack. I guess we'll do all of them and then we'll come back. Did I miss anything? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I never really, never really cared for the Japanese stuff, World War II stuff. wasn't cool enough looking. You know, the German planes and stuff and tanks—they're all cool. Yeah, they're bad guys and they're assholes, but you know, they still look cool. You know, Japanese stuff this doesn't excite me. All my models, all my models came with crooked spiders on them. I guess it was long enough ago that people weren't offended by that. Well, they probably weren't made in Germany. If they were made in Germany, you couldn't have them on there. But all those Airfix and Airfix stuff still still come with those decals, or people find them offensive now. I don't know. It never occurred to me as a kid. You know, I mean, you got to put the right decals on them to make them. Accurate. I'm not promoting that nonsense. Just need to have them accurate. I 
I know in video games and stuff like that, they'll put the, the red flag with a white circle and they'll put like a iron cross in the middle of it instead of the crooked spider. I, I guess that works. That's reasonable. You know, you got to be... You got to be... Um, do the best you can. But... I've never understood why it's okay to do the hammer and sickle, but not the other one. One's just as bad as the other one, in my opinion. But <clears throat> One of them was our ally. Yeah, okay. We did all three? I thought it was on the second one. Excellent. I've gotten ahead of myself. I got this other color next to it that could just as easily work for it, but these are actually not the same color, but they could. You could do one and replace it for the other one, and nobody would know except me. Because we're going to blend them in with other colors anyways, or layer them up. I always called this painting method blending. But I'm not blending on the figure. We're blending here. So. I think it's referred to as layering. I've been doing this sort of thing since the mid-90s. I'm sure I got the idea from some magazine or I don't know. Games Workshop magazine. Even though, even though I never painted Games Workshop stuff. It just wasn't the... They didn't do the right periods for me to be interested in. Never, never was a fan of fantasy stuff. Still not a fan of fantasy stuff, but you know, lots of people do different things. If I do that, I can't do this, so... Limited time. Limited time budget.
I'm not sure why fantasy and science fiction is more appealing to people than historical stuff. Maybe there's just a perception. Obviously, not a, us historical war gamers are the exception, but maybe there's a perception that people are interested in doing historical th stuff because they think that they already know what the conclusion is. But those of you that are historical war gamers, that that's not the point. If that was the point, we wouldn't be doing it. But it's the ability to change history. Oh, that's strange. I got moisture in my watch. Hmm. Have to pop that open, let it breathe. This is my second crappy watch. Well, not really crappy, but it got it was used. And um I went last weekend, I ended up going to the Springs and I ended up losing it at some point, but I had it for a long time. And um, I'm going to go ahead and pop this thing. Nah, that can wait. That can wait. I change all the batteries and stuff on my, my watches, so we'll just pop that open, let it breathe, and it should be good. I did take it into a pool, but I didn't go very deep. Oh, well, it figures the other one had a better seal than this one, but this is in better shape than the other watch. But And I had the other one, I think, for like seven or eight years and bought it used for like under $20 or something like that. It's the one I took to work, so now this one's been upgraded to the work watch. But I like these old school, older school Swiss Army watches that they don't make anymore. Could grab a few on eBay for a lot less than they used to cost, but I'll have to check the seal on it. Maybe somehow it's getting moisture in there. Just funny because I don't remember it having moisture yesterday when I looked at it. Oh well, easy fix. Still running, so. I think we're about done with. Oh, I see. Let's add a little bit more oomph here. A little bit more paint added to here. There we go. Dump it in a thing of rice. That's what they say. Is you get water in something you don't just put it in a bunch of dry rice and it'll suck all the moisture out of it. That's what they say. Are 
you can just pop it open, let it breathe, and it'll be out in no time. All right. Where are we going next? The crossbow itself or the flesh? Let's do the crossbow. Rutabakers. Rutabakers. That sounds like a Studebaker. But not as good eating. Three viewers. Man, we're low today. People doing exciting stuff. Too busy to watch Tony paint. I gotta go do things. It's all right. Is the UK still shut down? I don't know. I, I don't know jack about the news. Oh, this is Monster Brown. Yeah, Monster Brown will work. Monster Brown will work fine. I don't watch the news at all. What, so they can tell me what to be scared about this time? I'm good. I am going to go ahead and check that. I'm going to go ahead and open up a, a window here for the weather channel and see where the hell that storm is. Although it's not much of a storm. It's just a tropical depression. But that one ain't supposed to get rain today. It went so far to the west. Oh, it went way out there. Oh, it went way out there. Uh, okay, good. Maybe it won't mess up my deliveries for work either. Good. I don't need that nonsense. I am going to go get a little bit more coffee. I'll be right back. Two viewers. I gotta put some dancing girls or something like that on there. Get the people back. It's all good. Okay. We got this. There's the blacks over there. Perfect. Let's go ahead and base coat these crossbows. Yeah, there was a huge crossbow size difference between these guys and that one um, figure by um, Naismith I was going to work in there. It's probably too big of a difference, honestly, between the two. Really to work properly. It looked really out of place. Like the one guy would have like a little kid's crossbow instead of a full size one to get ridiculed on a battlefield.
Okay, now these crossbows suck from the standpoint of detail. I want to, let me take a look at something. I think it's got the metal plate up against the front and then the, the arms are wooden. I can never remember that. Sometimes they're metallic, sometimes they're wooden. I believe they're wooden. Uh, let's, let's see what, what we want to do. Medieval cross bow. Some are metal and some aren't. Well, the arms are really thick on this, so I'm not going to make them metal. I'm going to make the front of it look just like a regular bow. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, these these are these are way too thick here. These are way too thick to be metallic. You know, you wouldn't be able to pull back something like that, so Yeah. I'll look that stuff up before I have to repaint a bunch of things. It doesn't really matter that much one way or another, as long as I'm consistent within these guys. But I'm not a fan of these Essex crossbows. They're they're very toy toy looking. But that's what they gave me, so that's what we're gonna go with. Of course, the center there will be metal. We'll leave that to so we can paint it that way. We're just going to bring this all the way up and then do each one of them individually.
bows behave so differently or considerably differently or the, the fighting prowess of them is is different in DBA than in Field of Glory on the computer game significantly um, So either in Field of Glory, they're a lot weaker than they should be, or DBA, they're a lot more powerful than they should be. I, I think that's probably, they're more powerful in DBA than, than they should be. But. They are, um, Brutal in DBA. I mean, you 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 face you got to face some knights against them, and you're pretty much screwed. If you charge into them on a tie, you die, and they're one number higher than you. And it's just, I know what I'm playing knights. I certainly don't want to face long bowmen or or crossbowmen in DBA. They're a pain. Well, I don't like knights to begin with. You know, they behave all haphazardly and. Advance when you don't need them to, and die from bow fire. And... I played some games with in Field of Glory on the computer, and there's knights over there, so I'll move my crossbowmen over there and intercept, and they don't get to shoot before they get charged. And once they mix it up, it's pretty much over for the crossbowmen, which I don't know. It sounds like it'd be a lot more realistic. But at the end of the day, it's just a game. It's just a way to paint these silly little figures and do something with them. We're not, you know, practicing to be great commanders and build a time machine and go back in time and change, you know, how things turned out. I am not, I know some people like to do these medieval armies that are just kind of generic. They can use for everybody. And I just think that, um, in my, in my opinion, I sell, I would sell myself short if I did that, you know, um, I want to paint, there's other crossbowmen I could have already used and not have to paint these guys for this army, but eh, it's kind of defeats the purpose for me. I don't want to build generic medieval armies. I want a French one, and a German one, and a Hungarian one, and yeah, I'll switch units and, and replace them if I need to. If I'm, you know, playing a, a game or, or filming a battle of a certain matchup or whatever uh, that we're going to film online, but as a, um, as a standard operating procedure, I don't want to, I don't want to get in the habit of doing that. Otherwise, just everybody just do medievals, and then we just like, oh well, I just have a bunch of generic medieval armies. It's just not my, as a painter, it doesn't excite me. You know, 
oh, let's get excited about painting a generic medieval army. If it works for you, it works for you, but that's just not my, that's just not my cup of tea. Not my thing. It's a slow morning this time. Oh well. What what time is it? Seven thirty. Uh, we'll run till eight for sure. Unless things pick up a little bit here. Um, Dirk, what? I, I thought it was asleep. I'll use mercenary knights across multiple armies, but otherwise, I agree. Yeah, if you got to match them up or whatever. You know, um, you know, if I didn't have, uh, if I didn't have this book one thing I needed to do for this for the show, I'd probably roll right into doing a um, Italian um, communal Italian army because I can use them as allies for the Pope. I could actually use two of them as allies for the Pope. But we'll come back to them. There's, there's no doubt I'll come back and build some other elements for these this army. Um, it might just be a little while before I do that. There's just too much cool information out there available for medieval heraldry not to jump on that and really just go to town with it. Yeah, you gotta make some things up, but you know, there's a lot of there's all kinds of juicy stuff that's already available out there. You just have to uh, decide how much or how little of it you want to add. Okay, now let's go ahead and just add this pure here and then we'll add a little bit of highlight to it. Hmm. Huns, Armenians, Arabs that fight in multiple armies. Armenians. I still got that Cilician Armenian army from the Crusades period that I need to put together. I mean, I have the figures for them, but I have them from Old Glory. And then since then, <coughs> Blue Moon's come out with that. And since then, Lurkio, um, not Lurkio, Legio Heroica makes figures for them. And then who else? I want to say even Khorasan. So you could really make that army really varied. I don't know if I'll go the whole hog with all that, but none of them really make a really def definable king figure for that army. So I may have to modify a, a general to put him on the general stand whenever we'll I get around to doing them. But I got so much stuff to do. So I can't get, I can't get into other periods. I really don't want to, but I just have so much stuff that I, I have to do for, for, for this silly game and not only do I have to do them I want to do them so because yeah there's better games out there but the reality is you play a one hour game you can get a lot of games and you get a lot of gameplay with this army that you've spent time doing you know you, I work on World War II stuff and it may be many 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 hundreds of hours before I get anything any use out of it you know and I'm not going to be able to play it every week so Crusader Knights have shields 
from the Sal de Crusade. Sounds like the yeah. with Crusades. Sal sounds like Sala, which sounds like um, uh, room, like a uh, man. My name is just, the word escapes from me, like a living room. So, hall, hall of crusades. I bet that's what it means. Uh, French coat of arms from the crusades. I don't like to share units between armies. Good for you, man. I never can remember what army the Spanish war used in last. I try to do each army as a complete entity. Yeah, there you go. There's your incentive to paint another army. I mean, if you can't do it in DBA, what can you do it in, right? It's only a few more figures. It's only a few more figures. You know, I'm going to share this horde. I've got this deep horde, this generic, the ones that are pulling their pants down. You know, they're always fun. People like seeing them get a good yuck out of them. So um, I'll share them. I'm not going to, I'm not going to build a solid horde for every army. Um, but I think short of that, yeah, everybody has their own crossbowmen and Soloi and all that kind of stuff. All those sorts of things. I think we need a little bit more def, 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 definition and color than that. There we go. Let's try this. There we go. You give the impression that this is made out of wood. All of Crusades. It's some something came on the news feed the other day and said some high school was changing the name. It must have been a high school in Florida or something like that. It was changing the name of their mascot from Crusaders to, I don't know, Beekeepers or something like that. Beacons. That's what it is. Beacons. Like a lighthouse beacon. Whatever. I'd have been pissed if that happened in my school. And now you're the a lighthouse beacon instead of a, a knight. <clears throat> Lame. they're going to do when somebody shows up at the school and they're offended by lighthouses. <laughs> Just homeschool your damn kid. Be done with it. Okay, I think we're going to call these crossbows complete. Well, at least the wooden parts of them. We'll add the little metal parts later. Let's go ahead and run, roll under the flesh. Now, all three of these guys have mustaches. I 
glad I didn't do all eight of them that way. To be a crossbowman, you have to have a mustache. What? Janner, welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. You coming to the show in September? If we have it. We'll see. We're just going to assume that it's going to go on. There's not going to be any interruptions. There's not going to be any silly requirements. So we'll be almost back to normal. I'm just going to assume that's going to be the case. It may still surprise us. You never know. Okay. Mm. I still have a little bit of black to mix in with that. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, the feed's a lot better. All we need to do is get high-speed internet here. Get off that 20-year-old DSL we've been on, so... Good things. Good times. As I like to say, it's nice to be able to finally be in the 20th century instead of the 19th century. I know the people in our neighborhood are always complaining about, oh, man, the, the, the cable internet is so bad and it disconnects all the time. Well, when you come from, you know, our internet that hadn't changed in freaking 20 years. Yeah, this is like a godsend, you know. And finally allowed to be able to do multiple cameras, run it through decent resolution. Mainly decent resolution. Multiple cameras, that's not necessary, but decent resolution. A good microphone, you know. Check it out. You may find the references useful as you enjoy shields. Oh, you didn't send me a link unless you sent it somewhere else. If you did, then I'll check it out later. Yeah, I love shields. I love shields. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully the show goes on. I don't necessarily need a game. I just want to hang out with folks. But it depends if we're allowed to hang out. My fear is that they make some kind of drastic call in the last week. So the week before or something like that. So I haven't booked the hotel yet. I haven't paid for the con. I'm not doing that until the very last minute. I don't want to have to try to fight to get my money back. You know. You've got papal Italians on my painting table this week. You're such a wannabe. I just finished the bowman, the spearman, and night horse barding. It was what the... I was like, what the F color, but you have saved me. I painted my mysteries. You're welcome. We'll knock them out together. Yep. Yeah, what the F color, yep. Sometimes you just gotta jump in. And I'll admit, I sometimes get painter's block and I'm my own worst enemy. Sometimes you just have to start painting. 
It's very unusual that I've, I've started painting something and didn't like how it turned out, but you do sometimes psych yourself out. You're worried about, well, what if I make the wrong decision? What if I, how about like, you know, I've been doing this for like 35 freaking years. I just jump in and you'll be able to figure it out. Now, the funny thing is, is this army may not even make it at the show. I mean, I'm not even, I may not even run it. It's the, it's the Amorites that I need to get done for the show. So, it's not that I don't want to run these guys, but it's, there's lots, there's no event that I have to use this army for. That's probably the better way to say it. So. This is, I just want to do some battles with the with the Pope and using a litter and see what kind of zany stuff happens. Saving those for the tutors next. Yeah. I was going to build a tutor army because I've got figures for them, but they're just too similar in army composition to the um, Hundred Years War English. And our local players have three Hundred Years War English armies, so there's no hurry to do that. You know, a lot of it depends on you know what armies am I going to see recently in the um, in the games. So there's no point in adding to more of the same when when I could just do you know variety. You know, if I don't care specifically to do you know any of those. So I mean, there's hundreds of things out there's hundreds of armies I want to do so I find that somebody has something like Kandata is a perfect example uh, I was going to build Italian Kandata and then Joe went and, and bought them and and it's not like I was dead set again I having to do them but I'm like okay well we'll just do them later you know it's not a big deal And I know they can fight each other, but that stuff's boring. And it doesn't necessarily add any new troop compositions or anything to what we already have. It's kind of more of the same, so we'll put them off later. brush seems to be wanting to fray at the end a little bit. There you go. About to retire your ass. At least for the fine stuff. It's not like we don't have a metric crap ton of, br of other brushes. Uh, let's find our next candidate. We're going to have to clean this thing up. Okay, first of all, this one has these little frays here at the bottom that are never going to make it. Let's get rid of them because they're just in the way right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to cut on my cutting board for that just so I could see them. Cheap ass brushes. Yeah, we're not going to buy these anymore once we get through them all. The problem is I have so many to get through them all. And I did have plans on buying a, some Windsor and Newton brushes or something like that, a Historicon, and then they stopped having Historicons. And let's take... They stopped having Historicons in July. Yeah, let's be more specific. 
I hope they don't get this wild hair up their ass and just, oh, it went so well in November, we're just going to do it in November. Well, we'll never go to one again. November just doesn't work. Okay, I think we can work with that. I think I priced these brushes out. They're like 30 cents each by the time I'm done. So, Marco Mavro, there you go. No more Romans or Greeks. They could go for the odd and visually interesting, historically appealing like Martin. I totally agree with you. There's no point in building an army that everybody else has. No more Romans or Greeks. Mitch had so many Greeks, I never got a chance to paint any. Yep. I got two Roman armies? Yeah. I don't know. They just don't have them much. I like the Asian armies. <clears throat> All right, what were we doing? We were painting this guy's face? Got it. and Greeks. Neither one of those two have a... diversified troop composition. I want to do some barbarians. Not because they're any good, but... I got Ostrogoths, Visigoths, Vandals, all that kind of stuff. Honestly, should do the Byzantines first. I got guys that need to be fighting some Byzantines, and there's no Byzantines around to fight them in our group. So... Unlimited of thing, unlimited amount of things to do for sure. Never ending mountain of lead. this face. We can go on to the next one. I like painting the faces individually as it gives them character. And they're, if they're each slightly different, that's a good thing. worked okay we got to modify it a little bit you don't feel bad about doing that these brushes are damn cheap so du -du 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 -du. try king art premium gold series 9000 i have Raphaels, and they're nice the king art is ridiculously nice especially the tip and snap i haven't heard of king art are they not got to be careful where they're made the new high def camera is great excellent uh, found a local art store. We don't have a local art store. All we have is Michael's, Joanne's Fabrics, and Hobby Lobby. Picking up some oil paint tubes. The old guy that recommended them, he teaches painting and works for the University Art School. 
Yeah, we don't. We used to have a paid store. I got. I've got no place to buy better brushes than. I used to buy them. These these are from like a pack from. These are folk art or whatever. But I'm not buying any more that come from this place. I won't be buying any more. I don't care how much they cost. But I do need to get through whatever they are. So the next cheapest option, I think I've I've sourced some German ones. They're like twenty five dollars a pack. Which whatever not going through them that fast but we're not buying these Chinese brushes anymore you start making them in Taiwan I'll start buying them but just on principle I'm not doing it so um, the last time I bought these these were from folk art or plaid they say plaid on here but I think the packaging I, I went to Walmart probably three years ago and bought like six packs of these things and you can get like 10 brushes for like four, 397 or something like that and you know so if you have to if three of them are no good you know um you can get them from amazon okay i'll look that up hopefully they're not made in you know where i, I can't buy them i'm not allowed to buy them I, I will not allow myself to buy them let's put it that way uh let's see king art all right let me Actually, I'm going to grab my little notepad. It looks closer, but I have that specifically for this reason. Doo -doo. I love surfing products. You don't have to buy anything. It's like window shopping. But Oh, I need my glasses back on or I won't be able to find myself. Uh, King. King Art. Old series nine thousand. Ridiculously nice. What is ridiculously nice? Okay, we'll try them out. Yeah, we don't have any store. I, I would rather go to a brick and mortar store and get them, but if they don't have a brick and mortar store, what are you supposed to do? Not buy them? And luckily, I can afford, I don't have to buy $3 brushes. I'm not saying I'm made of money, but it's not something you're using all the time. So if people want to buy Chinese brushes, they can buy Chinese brushes. That's fine. <clears throat> not going to give them a hard time, but I'm not going to. Let's see. Can I get this on camera? To do it justice because sometimes the colors just don't come up on one camera. I know somebody's gonna go like, let me see the figure what it looks like. Let's see. It's so yellowing looking in the come on. Yeah. When the army's done, yeah, it's super yellow looking there. If this camera's very, see there, it's like this, this light is very natural lightish. And, but it doesn't, it doesn't show up on the camera. And I don't think I can modify the camera's colors because it's, I'm not using the regular camera app. I'm, I'm I've got to use a, a special app that can talk to the computer. You'd think that would be easy, you know, but. Nah, it's technology. The easy things are difficult. All hobbyists are window shoppers. Holds the tip fine. Okay, well, well, we'll get some. We'll try them out. We'll take a look at them anyways. Oh, I'm going to take a look at them right now. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't wait. All right, let's go to Amazon. Okay, what'd you call these things? King Art. Is that like a playoff of King Arthur? King Art. Uh, Gold Series 9000. Gold Series. Gold Series brushes. Let's see what we got here.
Oh, these are expensive. They must not be made in. Um, they may. They must not be made in China. Okay, cool. Excellent. And I, I like liners much better than rounds. Let's see where these things are made. Sri Lanka. That'll work. They're friendly. They're not commie bastards. That'll work. <laughs> I mean, literally. Make them anywhere except, you know, China, Yemen, North Korea, Iran. Yeah. No reason to buy a $20 brush, but definitely not a $0.30 cent brush. We invest too much effort in our miniatures. Yeah. We'll give them a shot. I'll take a little bit. Like $8 or something like that. I'll get one. Sure. You can use it just for faces. What's the worst thing that can happen? I blow $8. That's like a beer. <laughs> Rounding up a little bit. Yeah. Thanks for that uh, piece of advice. Might be cheaper on King Art website. But look, Amazon is tricky. You know, it's worth it for Amazon, just the tracking. I mean, you get things before you order them there. Um, I'm a big Amazon fan. I am. Uh, it'd be nice if they had things in the store so you could support your local store. But if you can't, if the store goes out of business, then what are you supposed to do? You know? But. All right. Next face. Still can't get over the fact I have a Japanese brush. Wow. I've had it a long time. I've had it probably 20 years. But we used to have an art store that was in, in business for a long time. And then... Probably 10 years ago. Maybe it was longer than that. They went out of business. I don't know. It happens. I'm an Amazon fan, especially since they deliver the stuff themselves. Once they do a handoff to the post office, man, all kinds of chaos gets introduced. I am not a fan of the post office. You know. Now I'm curious. Do tell. Oh, well, about the... Yeah, we had, a, we had an art store here for the longest time. It was called Chestnuts. It wasn't cheap, but it was a place you could spend two hours looking around easily. Um, and then they got by, bought by a, they changed the name to Central Florida Office Plus or something like that. But they still kept like the same kind of inventory. Um, all kinds of really cool stuff to look, pastels and, you know, artsy stuff. You know, I don't do that kind of stuff, but I, I can appreciate it. But they went out of business like 10 years ago. And, you know, I'd rather go to brick and mortar stores. I want it now. You know, it's an $8 item. It's not like I'm buying a, a $8,000 item, you know, but. Yeah. Yeah. 
And sometimes it's hard to find out what brushes to get. But like three years ago, three years ago, three years, four years ago, I bought so many of these Walmart brushes. Well, they're not Walmart, but they're the plaid brand. And since then, probably about three years ago, they're Walmart's on my shit list of places I'm not walking into for unrelated reasons. So then I'm like, well, I got to get another source of, of these. So I ended up getting, I ended up getting some from Hobby Lobby, which was these yellow ones. Also came in a multi pack, but they don't say it on here. But these are Chinese as well. And in the last two years, I'm like, I'm not buying Chinese crap no more. Um, these I picked up at the same time as those yellow ones, and I haven't opened them yet. They're called Majestic, and they don't say where they come from, which of course means they're probably Chinese as well. There's Royal and Lang Nickel Brush Manufacturing Broadway, Maryville, Indiana. Well, that's just a distributor. But these were like $20 for 10, 20. It sure seems like a whole bunch of them. 10, 1, 2. Eleven brushes. Why would you package them in eleven? But they don't say where they come from. So, which probably means they're from the Red Menace. But anyhow, um, I'm not going to throw them away. I did think about making a video and snapping them all in half, but you know we don't need that kind of controversy here. But I have already started sourcing. Okay, when I run out of these brushes in five years or six, you know where am I going to get them from? Because Brick and mortar stores aren't going to all of a sudden start opening back up and carrying brushes. Uh, if you're still up around UF, I am. Um, there's a Blick store in Tampa if you go over there on a weekend. Ooh, okay. I've ordered from Blick before. That's cool. I think that's where I had to get my um, this stuff. Because Michael's no longer carries it. My Liquitex resin sand. Dick Blick. I'll have to check that out. I don't know about a whole weekend, but if we go to Tampa, Tampa is just in the wrong place for us. Unfortunately, we don't go there very often. Um, I'll have to hit that. And just like I wish Dunderbox was somewhere else. Dunderbox is freaking awesome. It's a German bar. It looks like you stepped into Germany. You know, for those of us that are uninformed Americans, that's a freaking great place. That'd be a place to have a game convention. All right, we're going to take over Dunderbox. Let the beer flow. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm never around Tampa anymore. It's a shame, but... Um, I'll have to check that out. Hopefully they're open on Sundays. That improves the... All right, I gotta write that on my notes too. I'm older now. I gotta write things down or I forget. It's not being old, it's just being incompetent. Dick, Blick, and Tampa. Perfect. Excellent. Cool. Thanks, I'll check that out. Yeah, we're still here from. Here at UF, even though we don't do anything UF related at all. Um, 11 is weird. Yeah. yeah. Maybe 10 is an unlucky number in China and they got to do them in 11. <laughs> oh, man. Um,. Yeah, I don't do anything that has to do with the University of Florida. My wife doesn't either. And yet, here we are. But it is what it is. I'd much rather live closer to Tampa. Clearwater, St. Pete, those beaches. Yeah, those beaches are freaking awesome. But then a storm comes to Florida and I don't worry about it because where we're at, we're landlocked and unless a tree falls on you, pretty much good on 
on high winds in this part of the state. You're blessed as far as that goes, but it's a trek to go to the coast. We were going down to Fort Myers Beach every 4th of July there for like four years. We didn't go this last year, but I like that. I like that part of the Florida. This just happens to be where the job is. North West Shore. Okay. Dang, I wish we had a good German restaurant here in Utah. Same here in Fort Myers. It's like the backwoods. Yeah. Yeah, the good thing that we have where we're at is... We're two hours from a lot of different things. So we can go to Orlando, you go to Jacksonville, you can go to the St. Pete area, Tampa. Um, you get into Georgia, you know. We're not like stuck like, okay, it's going to be four hours before we see something different. But I guess it's whatever you're used to. As long as I live in Florida, I'm good. I don't like the idea of living somewhere that's not Florida. It's psychological, I guess. But not that I like the weather. It's just too damn hot here. But, you know, if you're wet at the beach, it doesn't it doesn't matter. But just doing the job, I wish it was somewhere cooler. Yesterday, I, I had to take like four or five breaks. Well, I didn't have to. I chose to take four or five breaks to rehydrate from doing the lawn yesterday. It was freaking hot. No breeze. 90-something for sure. It was just brutal. But... The alternative is, is you live somewhere where you don't have a lawn, but then you have an assigned parking spot and you get home from work and some asshole's in your spot. I've had that happen before. Do not want to deal with that. And it ends up being somebody who um, doesn't work. That's used to happen. I used to come home from work and I had a condo. makes it sound really expensive it's just an apartment that we owned apartment with a mortgage oh look the moisture went away good old swiss technology excellent um had a condo there's three bedrooms or two bedrooms and a loft and you have two parking spaces that are assigned to you that have your address on the bumper block i'd come home and the Doobie Brothers, that's what I used to call them, that were next door. Just a bunch of punk-ass students. Uh, shit, I was in my mid-twenties at the time, so it wasn't like I was that old. But I was working. I've worked every day since I was 15, so... Um, they'd take both my parking spots. And it's like, I finally had to start calling the tow company. They, I think they were only there like six months or something, but it was like, I'm extremely defensive about when I come home from work and I can't even park in my own driveway, you know? So, red tide. You know, the red tide, what the F is that all about? That's just bullshit. Is that, does that happen anyways or is it sugar that does that? That's just, that's unacceptable. I would be starting a revolution and burning down sugar factories or something like that. You can't just be destroying, and I'm not a save the earth person, but, that's just wrong, man. So much income from Florida comes from tourism, and to have something ruin that, 
Because yeah, it's it's a that's a disaster. That's a freaking natural freaking disaster. Um, you lost a little German cafe that was right next to the Gaho War Game Store. Gaho sounds like a store that would be in um, in Barcelona. <laughs> lost a little German cafe that was right next to, due to the COVID crisis. Too bad, Sky. A nice German place is awesome. It is. Fortunately, I have an authentic French bakery just five minutes from home. Yeah, we don't need any. We have one here in town. We never go there. I've, I got all. I already have all the padding from a French bakery. I don't need to add more to it. <laughs> yeah, that red tie. That's bullshit. That's complete bullshit. But then the last time I went to the beach, I couldn't believe how much litter there was. Just, I want a license to like punch people in the face when they litter on the beach, man. You brought the stuff with you. You can take, it It now weighs less. Take your trash with you, man. Littering is ugly. Especially in a beach where you're damaging freaking creatures and. Oh, humans are terrible. But don't think if animals were in charge, it'd be any better. They'd, they'd suck too. They'd poop everywhere. And <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, that red tide's a... It's happened, I guess, the last... Maybe it happens every year, but... The last time we went down to Fort Myers Beach, it was like the next weekend after we were there, it came in. So luckily, we didn't have to deal with that. We didn't have to experience that. But What is Red Tide? Um, I'll probably explain it incorrectly. But supposedly it's some it's an algae bloom that kills a bunch of a bunch of fish. Oh, I think somebody just explained it. Um, yeah, so it's an algae bloom or, or something that basically kills a lot of fish. So you have a bunch of dead fish that you can't go to the beach basically. Um, and so it's a bunch of dead fish, and supposedly it's been made worse by runoff from the sugar. Which, excuse me for being ignorant, but uh, oh good. Um, Janner explained it there. Good. I'm sure he does a better example, but suppose I didn't even know we had a sugar um, uh, industry here in Florida. Excuse me for being ignorant, but it's just not what I think about in Florida. But supposedly it's done worse by the uh, some kind of runoff that they can do into the um, into the river system there in Southwest Florida. So natural bacteria grows out of control because the overflow from Okeechobee and the chemical runoff with nutrients causes boom explosion. Yeah. How do they get away with that shit? Lobbyists. That's how they get away with that shit. I want to know when lobbyist hunting season starts. Yeah, you basically can't go to the beach when that happens. You know that's killing freaking tourism and stuff, and that's where all, that's our big money income for the state of Florida. So... So yeah, I didn't even know there was a big sugar thing here in Florida because it's in an area, it's in the part of Florida where nobody lives. It's north of the Everglades, basically. And, you know, I think I've cut through there one time and it's like unexplored territory, you know. 
algal blooms occur because too many bad nutrients from chemical leaks or pollutants come from illegal waste disposal. I imagine communists. Yeah, it's communists are still worse because red tide goes away. Communists freaking, you got to kill them all yourself with a hammer. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had no idea sugar is huge in Florida. No idea. Well, you put too much sugar in stuff anyways. I rarely have sugar. I get angry when I have sugar. Uh, true story. I, I, don't, I don't do well with sugar. Yeah. Nothing red is good. Think about it. Look, see these guys? They're probably the bad guys. You needed to kill these. When you see these guys in the battlefield, they're wearing red. Just, just take them out. Money, 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 and money. Yeah. Too many people. I'm not anti-money, but you can't sell your integrity for money either. It's not right. I'd be a terrible politician, wouldn't I? I'd never get elected. You got to do this for me. No, I don't. I don't need your money that bad. No, you don't get elected. No. But I do pay attention where I buy things from. Like you'll go to the store and you'll be like, go to the, even some place like Publix. Like let's buy some shrimp. Where do they come from? India. What? We, we're surrounded by freaking shrimp and fish. There should be no, in Florida, there should be no sea creatures that you eat that do not come from the Gulf or the Atlantic. It is asinine. You know, I don't care what your reasoning is. Just, you know. I think geographically, and that makes zero sense, you know. It's because they can overfish and do whatever the hell you want out there. Me too. A lot of communists on the beach. <laughs> you switch to coconut sugar. Perfect. I don't know if we got any regular sugar in the house. Don't need it. Okay, this guy's done. Next. I know, we're turning away all the communists on this channel. Whatever, they can go fly a kite. Jack-booted people don't need to come here. have to mix up the mustache colors on these folks. Uh, 
Essex does not make bad figures. I just want to mix them in in whatever poses I feel like mixing them in. And I don't want, you know, I don't mind having a bunch of figures that are the same pose if they're a unit that like Romans or something like that that would be, you know, consistent looking in my opinion. So, good coconut, sugar. It's coconut. It just seems like sugar. Yeah. Fruit's good, man. Fruit things are good. You eat keto, no sugar. Stuff like almond flour. My wife eats keto. Keto. Let's add a little bit more of this base color. It's almost time for a snack. Almost. And there'll be no sugar in that snack. Now we've offended Big Sugar, Walmart, and the communists. It's time to run. Yeah, I don't see any problem with any of that stuff. Nope. Screw all, screw all those guys. Oh, we went too far. That's one shade too far. All right, here. And then here. And then a little bit of that. There we go. That's more like it.
Well, I said it was gonna stop at eight. Well, that went out the window. That's good. Okay. Let's see where we're at here. Okay, hopefully see you soon, yeah. Absolutely. Let me go to a little boy's room. I'll be right back. Bob Ross didn't like commies either? Huh. I hate commies. Uh, Bob Ross version. Nah, he's a lot more talented than I'll ever be. I mean, he really was. I mean, you know. I mean, he, need to, he needed a stylist, that's for sure. But no, that guy's extremely talented. He just makes it seem real easy. Oh. 
fan of his. And um, I've done some I've done some artwork that. I painted a couple little background things, not to compare myself to them, because you know I can't hold a candle to them, but um, that I think turned out really well and was extremely easy to do, um, even though I've never painted two-dimensional things before. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, just by the fact of doing this and mixing colors, you have kind of a clue. But yeah, he does all this cool stuff with that that palette that he uses to paint things, but I did go to an art show maybe five years ago. And I've mentioned this before on here, but I'll mention it again. Um, that um, there was a guy that was sitting on the sidewalk um, and was painting, you know, a, you know, two-dimensional thing on a painting. And um, he would we got to talking and he wanted to see some of the stuff that I did and he was really impressed. And I'm like, dude, I'm just painting by numbers. Like the stuff's already done here. You're painting stuff on a canvas. So he was, I don't know whether he was just entertaining me or whatever, but I think that what I do is just super, super simple compared to, you know, painting artwork on a to totally blank canvas, but it is a trick. I get it. I think this is extremely easy. It just takes a long time. But, you know, I've done it thousands of times, tens of thousands of times, so it's almost a no-brainer. And um, I bet if he's done the same amount of time on a regular painting, he probably thinks the same way about what he's doing. But I did do my first ever background things recently and um, I thought they turned out really well for you know just have kind of a background scene for some of my photos but you know I'm not going to go out and paint things from that probably I probably should but again it's painter's block you know I've never done it before so I'm afraid that it's not going to turn out well instead of just freaking jump in and just start doing stuff but I I I remember a couple years ago the the mother-in-law brought me a picture of something that she saw hanging on a wall. And she says, I want you to paint this for me. And I said, I, I can't paint something that bad. It was just abstract, random scribble stuff. And I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't do that. I can't just do abstract, random brushstroke crap. You know, if you're into that kind of art, that's cool. But, you know, I won't be painting that for you. I just, I couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> uh, Bob Ross was first person to help me realize painting could be a relaxing effort as well as creative. It is, it and it's a, it's relaxing listening to him. That I mean that guy again, that guy. Um, he probably wasn't fun at parties, but he had a good meter and he was relaxing. He was really good at what he did. So. Um, yeah. Seemed like a really nice guy. We were in, um, didn't know he was from New Smyrna Beach, and we were in New Smyrna Beach about a, a month ago, and he has a museum or something like that. We didn't get a chance to go, but we'll be back. But my daughter's a big fan of his. Dressed up as him as Halloween one year. and you know, Always a positive fellow. Or at least on camera, always a positive fellow. You never know how famous people are off camera, but very relaxing to listen to. But I did when I painted the little background, I ended up going on YouTube, you know, which is my go-to place when I don't know how to do something. I mean, you know, I might not find the answer from the first video I see, but, you know, between several videos and so forth, I could, I could figure out what works for me and wanted to paint, how to paint a, a background with acrylics. 
And the first guy this guy did is he took his canvas, and it wasn't a very big canvas that he did. He covered the entire thing with raw umber, which never would have occurred to me. So even the parts that you're going to eventually paint, like the sky or blue or even white or anything, you just cover you just cover the entire canvas with you know with a color similar to to this right here, kind of the mid shade. Of, and I'm like, okay, let's just and it just I don't know it it. it I just followed the instructions. I was just did as I was told, and um, and I was pretty happy with how it turned out. So I've done I think five of them so far, and there's going to be more. But oh, it's just a little canvas, just to have kind of a little background to take photos of the figures, just something to add to them. It's simple enough to do. It took about it took about ten minutes to do. Honestly, it was so freaking simple. It's crazy. Um, I ended up taking a plate and used that as a palette, you know, because I'm using, and it's all with uh, craft paint. I would love to have the acrylic tube paint, but it, it's just too expensive to get into that, and I'm not going to use it much. But So I just used, like, the 99-cent craft paints, and it worked just fine for what I was using it for, you know. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we got that done. Go get our let's go get our good old bronze out. I guess I guess we'll keep going. I guess we'll keep going. Did I come up with a name for the Pope figure yet? Not yet. He's going to be, we're just going to call him Pope Innocent. Whether he, whether you want him to be the third or the fourth or, you know, somebody else or, uh, no, I haven't called him yet that yet. I'm sure his name will, I'm sh he'll probably have a nickname and that's what, what he'll be. Hey, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm innocent. I have a hard time painting a sword and not using this bronze for the hilt. I think that's what it's called. I mentioned it enough. I should probably look it up what the hell it's called. The cross piece. The hand guard part. We'll do the hilt and the pommel in this color. Alright. Well, we have the belt is damn near hidden. Let's use a light color for both that in the, the little sack for the thing. We'll use the same color for both of them. I'm going to go my, to my go-to. Um, yeah, well, when the papal army gets done, we need to get this painted. This is some Dollar Tree thing that Mitch has, so we're going to do red roofs and stuff like that, but this is going to be a BUA for the papal army and other things, but this is Mitch's, so We can do better than Chinese slave painting, whatever, however they came up with this stuff. So maybe not immediately next, because we do need to get the um, Amorites done, but but something like that. No, nope. but I looked. I don't want to use Russian brown. It's this one. It's the other one. Khaki. This is a little this one's a little greenish. Green khaki. I love this paint, but the containers, once that little tab breaks off, you're on your own.
put some of that down. We'll mess with that later. All right, we're gonna need new black, aren't we? Yeah. Where's my, where's my pen? I gotta look that up. I keep looking for this video. I, I keep forgetting to look for this video. Oil, office, chair. There's gotta be somebody who did a video on how to keep these office chairs from creaking. This thing needs some lubrication. When I shift from side to side, it makes this groaning sound. Recently picked up an aquarium collection of Greek column runes, a couple bucks at PetSmart, perfect for, yeah. Yeah, there's good stuff. At, I don't have any pets, but when I go to PetSmart or something like that, it's to, it's to go search for goodies like that. No pets here. One of the few people that doesn't have any pets. Never had them growing up. We're going to accidentally get all these guys done in a heartbeat. Well, that's good. That's three of eight. That's how you knock these guys out. So these other guys will all have this. They'll have the same motif in that they'll have this undershirt in the same color red. Some of them have some uh, like a padded, small padded jacket over it. Another guy will have like studded armor, but they still have this like over shirt. So these just got these particular three guys are just happen to be unarmored on top of that. But that's the that's the motif that they're all going to have. So they're going to look different, but they're going to look similar, like they belong together. At least that's my story. That's my fluff background story to these guys. Budgie grit is a great cheap basing material. Huh. I don't even know what the hell a budgie is. <laughs> budgie grit. I don't think I'll be changing my base material. That's I'm kind of in a in a problem now because my earlier armies that I want to redo, I used a different basing style and I'll have, end up having to redo all of them. So I, I'm really not looking forward to doing something like that. I used to use Elmer's glue mixed with actual sand and making my own mixture. And I was perfectly happy with it until I went and changed my basing method with this uh, Liquitex stuff, which there's no regrets, but um, it has a lot more variations and it's a lot more... Um, sharper the the gradations between the the pieces and i'm happy with it i'm happier with it but the first eight armies that i did all have the earlier basing method so if i have to modify them i have to rebase them all i don't i can't do the earlier one anymore i don't like how it looks you know but 
most of my armies that need to be converted to 3.0 fall in that earlier period. So my feudal Spanish, my my Berbers, my Koreans, Tang Chinese, uh, Marian Romans, Polybians, Armenians, all those armies have the earlier basing style. I think that's it. Oh, my Rajputs. All those have that earlier style, which I don't care for much anymore. Budgie's British term for parakeets. Interesting. Parakeet grit. Is it made from actual parakeets? How cruel. <laughs> this one guy who I follow, he's a really good painter. He uses chinchilla dust. as that? And it looks great on his... Looks great on his figures. All right, let's bring this all the way to the top. Let's do the base color and then the lightener as well. Knock it out. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to break after this. That just leaves the hair, mustache, shoes, crossbow bolt ends. And these three guys will be complete. I just have a hard time watching other stuff while I paint. I would love to catch up on that die cast racing while I was painting, but it's so entertaining. I'm gonna be looking up all the time trying to see how things end or the crashes or the jumps or whatever happens. Because their races are certainly as interesting as our DBA battles for sure. All kinds of crazy stuff happens, but I'm not the reality is I'm gonna get any painting done while that was going on. just not going to happen you end up getting distracted and you're looking like this for a long time and the next thing you know you go back to painting and the, the paint on your brush is dried you have to start back over that's like not a good solution and i know because it's happened to me before budgies are like british parakeets small and slightly disappointing <laughs> They like to peck at grit on the floor if they're cages and shout the occasional obscenity. <laughs> oh, you silly budgie. <laughs> yeah. I know people that have things in cages. And I mean 
birds, and they're just noisy all the time. And they just ignore it. And I'm like, shut that thing up. First of all, you know, you're lucky enough to be born a creature that can fly. Why would you put them in a cage? I don't know. Not an animal rights person, but just saying, you know, some things just don't make any sense. <laughs> but I've never really needed pets because I don't need to be entertained. I mean, this is what keeps me going, you know. I hear all these horror stories of people wargaming and like the cat did this and the cat did the other thing. Like, what the hell you need a cat for knocking down all your stuff? I lived alone many years and I never had a pet. I didn't feel the need for it. Certainly not if he's going to be destroying things that take me forever to do. You know, you're not helping, pal. Okay, I think we're done with that. All right, let's go have some let's go have some breakfast and maybe we'll be back on later today. No guarantees, but I would would be nice to knock these guys out today. Okay, folks. Well, thanks for stopping by. And um, even though today was probably the paying session, I had the least amount of people on there. So if you did join us, you're one of the elite few that came by. So I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I don't think that we got... I think we for, for a moment, we got over 10. But uh, that's okay. You guys got other things to do. I get it. Okay. Until next time, uh, happy Sunday and...